Good morning, everyone. You can type on the chat to indicate if you are if you can be able to listen to me so that we can start. We'll be starting in the next uh, two minutes. So please indicate on the chat if you can clearly hear what I'm saying. So we can start now. I'll be taking you through the Microsoft Teams, the Google Suite, and the Zoom. These are online training platforms, and uh, I'll be sharing with you what you require for you to be able to join these platforms. So I'll be sharing my slides right now. Because of the delay, the Zima sounds in there. So let me take this opportunity first to welcome you to the University of Nairobi. And uh, I wish you all the best in your learning in this institution. So as you can see, the vision of the university is to become a world-class university committed to scholarly excellence. So dear students, uh, we have a team at this college which will be very much uh, be assisting you during this academic year. So in case you have any challenges, I'll be sharing the help desk for this campus so that if you have any challenges, you can contact us. So what are the ICT services that are available? We have uh, the university has internet services. You'll also have the university will be providing you with an email account. You'll also be required to create an active directory account of which most of you have already done that. Then we have external internet access, we have websites, we have the student management information system portal. There's also what we call the VPN, that is virtual private network. This will enable you to access university materials from home. Then we have the library services, of which I think you did an orientation on Friday on library services. Then we have the e-learning, e-learning platform will be taken through this in the course of this week. And then the contacts, I'll be giving you our support contacts just in the course of this uh, training. So on internet, the university offers internet services internally, within and externally. I'll be showing you through uh, how do you access the university services when you are outside the university, like now you are learning from home. Then we have the student management information system. This is a system which, uh, which has been used to automate student related processes like checking school fees, register for courses, checking for timetable, checking for results online. You don't have to come on the campus for you to know your results. Then we have the email. I'll be emphasizing on email because this will be the main platform that will be used to communicate between the students and the university. If it is, for example, your department and also with, your st with the fellow students. And you need to know that this is mandatory. You have to have a UON student email. A number of you are still using their personal emails. So that is why you are not able to receive communication from university. So you need to create one. That one will be showing you shortly. 
Then the university website. Our university contains quite a number of information, so you should be able to visit our website whereby you can be able to learn about the university colleges, the various colleges that we have, apart from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. And then you can also be able to learn other information from students that is through their research work. Then you can be able to learn about the staff. You can search for a professor or a, your lecturer from the university website and be able to learn more about him or her. And then other information concerning the other stakeholders and the general public. So concerning internet, interne internally at the campus here, we have uh, the internet is, is connected on the various classrooms, lecture theaters, and all the buildings within the campus. So if you, once you report to the campus, you should be able to access the Wi-Fi. We have some hotspots. So what you will be required to have is the network access for you to log into the university network. Externally, uh, we have external internet provision that is through our service providers. And these uh, will be showing you shortly how you can be able to subscribe for the discounted uh, bundles. And also how you can access the telecom SIM card. I think you have come across that uh, you are supposed to apply for it. You cannot get it automatically. So you will be provided with a telecom SIM card which has been loaded with data bundles for you to enable you to learn at home. So what are the requirements for you to use the university network? You need a university email and also you need to have an active directory account. And then if you are within the campus, you need to be next to where we have a Wi-Fi hotspot. But when you have an AD account, you can be able to access university materials while you are learning at home. So you need to take a note of the, the slide that I've just shown you. So this is the help desk for College of Humanities and Social Sciences. So if you are in faculty of arts and you have issues with your with your uh, issues to do with fees, issues to do with registration. So you need to write to faculty of arts. That is the email is foa help at onbi.ac.ke. If you are from Institute of Anthropology, this is the email. You need to write iagas help at unbi.ac.ke. The students from the Institute of Diplomacy and International Studies, your uh, uh, support email is edishelp at unbi.ac.ke. Those from School of Business, this is your support email. Bus help at unbi.ac.ke. School of Economics, you need to know this is econ help at unbi.ac.ke. Then School of Journalism, the support email is sojhelp at unbi.se.ke. School of Law, solhelp at unbi.se.ke. So the reason why I'm putting this email is for if you have any problem, any challenge for you to be assisted immediately, you need to write to these emails and you'll be rest assured that you'll be assisted. The support email below here is for the main, that is the college uh, support email, for, that is for the ICT office. So you need to know that for the support for, for ICT support, we'll be dealing with issues to do with maybe internet connection, things related with ICT, but for things which are specific to the faculty, you need to write to those emails. Another thing that you need to note is you need to give your full name, your registration number, and your degree that you are taking. And also you need to indicate your faculty. This will enable uh, your, your queries to be handled efficiently. So university students accounts to access internet services internally, you'll be required the following. You need to have a student email 
and the student email you create will be created. It is it will be housed under Google Suite. And then we have the Active Directory account. All these you create them under your student portal. You need to log into your student portal. That is smis.unbi.se.ke. Under my profile, you should be able to do all this. Email is the main mode of communication to students, and it is mandatory to have one. I think I have already emphasized on this, so I think I don't need to tackle it, but steps on how to create the student email. You need to note again, you will receive online invitation via your student email, so you cannot be you cannot be forwarded an invitation link by your colleague. So you will be send an individual link uh, through your student email. So you need to, how do you create one? So for you to create, you need to go to the University of Nairobi website. Under resources, click on student email. So just click on create student email. Another option is you go to, you log into the SMIS portal, that is smis.unbi.ac.ke. And then once you log in, go to my profile and then click create student email. Then you just follow the st simple steps that are there. If you have already created a Gmail account, there are similar steps that you will do, that you will follow to create. Make sure you create a password, which you can easily remember because we have had challenges where a student created a password and within just Within hours, you cannot remember what it created. So I advise you to either use your national ID as the password so that you, this is an email that you will use in the next four years that you'll be in the university. So Google Suit, how do you log into the university email? You go to the Gmail platform. So I believe everyone has a, has a Gmail personal account. So you, the same way you go to Gmail, University is uh, hosting the university student emails on the on the Google account. So you just go and type your full uh, student email on the on the Gmail platform. So your email should read like this. If it is Juma, you can say Juma at students. .ke, and then you type the password. You'll need to add your phone number uh, or uh, alternate email. This is for the purposes of uh, restoring. In case you forget password, you can easily reset your account. You can easily. So this will enable you self resetting of password. So what are the resources that are available on the Google account? We have the email. That is the first one. And then there is a the second one, which is Google Classroom. This is the platform that now you will be using to do your exams and also for learning purposes. Your lecturer can post assignments on the Google Classroom and you should be able to uh, access them, do the questions and send them to your lecturer online. Then you have also the calendar. Calendar is for just for the purposes of uh, scheduling events. Then we have the Google Drive storage. This is purposes of storing uh, storing uh, files you can actually store your your exam materials there you can store your your learning uh, files on the google drive i think it has a capacity of around 15 gb free then we have google meet i'll be taking you through this shortly so i'll be taking you through the google classroom and the google meet in the next few minutes also you can access youtube from the google account you have the Google Docs, the slides, and the like. And also, you can switch account. You can go to your personal account, and also to your, and also you can switch to your university student email. So, this is the window that will appear when you want to create your student email. So, this one you'll be trained, I think, on uh, Thursday. So you should not be worried. But if you know in advance, the better. So you just come and say, I don't know my email, create email account, and then you just follow the simple procedures. Active Directory credentials are used to access the, the VPN. 
that is virtual private networks, that is the library services portal. Also, the VPN credentials are used for E-Class. And um, we have the UON network identity. You will also be using, once you are in the campus here, to authenticate our internet, you will be required to have some credentials. So you will also use the active uh, directory credentials to log into our network. For more information, just you can write this uh, URL here, wiki.unbi. You'll be able to learn more about the UON network services and how to access them and how to create the login details. So procedure for creating the Active Directory account. I think most of you have been uh, most of you have been unable to do it, but what you need to note is that once you finish the registration process, just give it like two days or even some of you can be at the end of the business. The following day, you can be able now to check if you are ready. Click on the link forgotten password or expired password. And then what you are supposed to do on step three, you are supposed to type your registration number without forward slashes. As for example, this is a registration number for a student at the School of Business, so D33, uh, 12-34-5-2020. This will be your AD username. So click on search button, type your registration number again, and click search answer. So read through the password requirements. You are supposed to type a password with the minimum eight characters. So the first character has to be in caps and then the rest can be small letters and you include also some uh, numbers. So it can either be your name, 2020, something like that. And then you click on the button, change password. So then that you'll be getting and uh, you just go to AD students, you should be able to see this screen. Just click on this forgotten password and then you click here to reset your password. So I'll be going through the online learning platforms. And uh, as you can see, these are the learning platform that will be coming uh, uh, with, uh, will be coming through as you go on with our learning at the university. Yeah? So the first one is the Google Meet. And then we have the Microsoft Teams. And then we have what we call Zoom. So I'll be taking you through the first three of them. The other two, E-Class and SOMAS, will be taken through in another session. So just uh, be patient. I'll be taking you through the first one, the second, and the third. So this is just uh, to let you know fully paid for access is provided by Telecom Kenya. So to register for you to get the free SIM card, ensure you have already paid your semester fees full and then you update your profile on the SMIS portal. At the end of updating, there is an option for a registering for telecom bundles. So select that and submit. So please make sure after updating your profile, there is a section that will, that will require you to register for telecom bundles. So select that one and submit. So the request will be processed and you'll be informed of the details when successful. You can actually visit our ICT website and you should be able to read. There are some questions that you might be asking, but answers have already been posted there. So there's also the discounted bundles by Safaricom, Airtel Network and Telecom Kenya through Kenet. So for you to get this uh, free, uh, it's not free, but discounted bundles, to register, just go to Hello. this link here, https registration.kenet.org forward slash registration and fill in your details. Hello. Click on submit. It takes a maximum of two weeks wow. to process the results. Periodically, go to this site, uh, that is registration.kenet.org.ke. That is for the purposes of checking your status of your application. Mm. More details of this offer can be found at registration.kenet.org. So kindly note this one down. It is very important for your 
case now that you are learning from home, you might need some discounted bundles for you to attend online classes. Uh, student resources. There are quite a number of student resources that are avail available on the portal. And these are some of them. You'll be able to access the student portal, student email, the SOMAS, those are the learning management system, the e-learning portal, the library. Also, we have a system for requesting for transcripts online. You also have the link for help, that is for, for postgraduate. And all these, I think these, you can be able to check that. So I'll be taking you through the Google Meet. Let me share again. Just hold on a minute. I'm trying to share something on my screen. So I'll be taking you through Google Meet uh, shortly. Ah, there you go. So I think you are you are there. So I'll not be emphasizing anymore. I'll be going very fast through this slide. So the objective of this is for you to know these online platforms, and uh, Google Meet is one of them. I'll be sharing how to hold a video meeting via Google Meet, and then uh, I'll not be taking you through the e-class, uh, the e-learning uh, part of it, but I'll be showing you briefly on how to use the Google Classroom, and now you'll be able to get the link. So video conference platform that we are using currently at the university, we have the Google Meet. So this app allows users to join a pre-scheduled meeting from the calendar events. You just choose a link, enter a meeting via code, or you dial from the phone, or you even use the invitation link. That's why I emphasize you'll be required to have a, a university email because a, a, a link will be sent directly to your email. Then we have Zoom. I've skipped Google Duo because we might not be using Google Duo that much. At the university currently, we are using Google Meet and we are using also Zoom and uh, MS Teams. So Zoom, Zoom is a cloud-based service which offers meetings and webinars and provide content sharing and video conferencing capability. You do not need a Zoom account to attend a Zoom meeting. Only the host is required to have an account to enable scheduling of meetings. So one thing you, that you need to note is that for Zoom, and also Google Meet, you'll be sent an invitation link through your email. So that's why I was insisting you must have a university email so that you'll be able to receive this invitation link. Then we have the third one, which is the MS Teams. I'll be jumping the big uh, blue button. This is also another online platform that is available, but is a, a Linux-based uh, uh, video conferencing platform. We are also using it at the university, but for now we are using the other the three that I've mentioned, that is Zoom, Google Meet, and MS Teams. MS Teams also is the same, is a Microsoft uh, product, which also offers uh, video conferencing capability. And uh, it enables, uh, it ca you can be able to reach uh, a, a big number of uh, participants. For right now, we have like uh, for this session, we have like 443 participants. So, if we have more than 10,000, MS Teams can uh, handle it very well. Even Zoom can handle it very well. And uh, it's also very friendly and uh, it can enable you to share your video. You can be able to share your, your presentation without any much difficulty. So, learning management systems. Uh, that we have. We have what we call Moodle. Moodle is a learning platform or course management system. And uh, this one we are using at the university, we call it E-Class. 
Then we have another one called Caroline, that is EON e-learning platform. It's also a modular system which uh, the, 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 the courses have been uploaded uh, in modular form. Then there is this Google Classroom. This one I will be taking you through because this is very important. This is part of the Google Suits that uh, that is housed under the, the Google platform. So Google Classroom is a free web service developed by Google for schools that aims to simplify creating, distributing, and grading of assignment in a paperless way. So the, pri the primary purpose of the Google Classroom is to streamline the process of sharing files between teachers and the students. I'll be showing you shortly how to do that. So we need first, before we go to this online platform, you need to learn about the video conferencing etiquettes, what is required of you. So before joining the class, check your technology. You need to check if the audio settings are correct, they are working. You need to check your video settings if your camera is working. You need to check your battery because you can go to an online session and your battery is low and then in the process you are you you cannot join the session and also connectivity is very important because you need to check if uh, if your internet is perfect then another thing that you need to note is you need to keep time online meeting will often start on time so you don't have to be saying the classes will be starting at uh, 11 30 and yet the session is supposed to start at 11, so you need to make sure you join on time. Ensure you sign at the actual listed time or hurry if the settings allow. And then dress code. Sometimes you need don't need to you need to dress appropriately for the meeting or for the class. Do not be partially dressed for the online classes. Then before joining the class, check your background. Make sure your background is appropriate suited for the meeting should not be a background that will disturb other participants when they are attending the class then control distractions incoming calls can be one of them that is your phone make sure maybe you are muted you mute your phone or you can if you have an alternative uh, say you have an alternative internet you can decide to go on airplane mode or other people, people can also disrupt your meeting. You can turn off your TV, your radio. That's all. Then after joining the class and also during the session now, you need to mute your mic, mute your microphone unless you are speaking. This will ensure the facilitator can be heard. As you know very well, if a person just join a meeting and you are in the middle of the meeting, that one will make disruptions and the participants will not be able to listen. Watch your nonverbal behavior, that is stay focused on the call. If the video is on, look into the camera. Avoid multitasking during the video call. So treat this as a face-to-face -face session. Think of a video call as just either under the normal uh, meeting where you do it face-to-face. -face. Do not drive or walk during the meeting and then do not interrupt the speakers wait for a pause before talking yes so then how to join the google meet class so the facilitator for your case now will be your lecturer will be generating a link this is shared mainly on the email so that's why i've been emphasizing you must have a university student email for you to receive this invitation link and can be shared on other platforms. As you know very well, you can share these on the WhatsApp, you can share on your email, you can send it as a, as a text. So that is how you'll be able to receive the invitation link. You can also check on your calendar. If you just go on your calendar and if it has been scheduled via the calendar, you should be able to see on your calendar of events. Then now joining the Google Meet. As you can see on my screen, you can go to the nine dots. If you are on the Gmail platform, you just go on the nine dots and then you just go directly to the meet button. So if you do, if, 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 if when you click on the Google Meet, then you should be able to see a page like this. Uh, I think it's just the next page. So you should be able to see your meeting, which has already been posted on the Google Meet. 
and then you just join. Or alternatively, just click on the link which has been sent on your email and you should be able to join. Join via your phone. You can actually join either on the phone or the computer provided you are connected to the internet. So call on the phone or other portable devices or on the laptop, for example. So once you are on the meet page, this is the page I was trying to explain to you. You should be able to see the meetings which have already been scheduled on the Google Meet page. So for example, there is a meeting here at 12.30 p.m. and there is also another one at 4 p.m. So if you click on the meeting, it will ask for a code which you will enter. Or if it is just a, a link, you just click on the invitation link and you should be able to join the meeting. So if, it, if there is a code which had been sent, you should be able to have the code and then you just enter the code. But in most cases, you should be able to see a link which you just... Uh, you can actually copy the link and you place it instead of the code and you just click continue. Then you should be able to join the meeting. So once you join the meeting, you should be able to have a screen like this. So you just click, uh, you can decide to mute. The first button here is for muting the mic. The second one is for the camera. So you just click join now and then you should be able to join the meeting. So this is the this is the main, these are the key features for the Google Meet. The first one here is the mic, which most of the time you should make sure it is mute. If you want to leave the meeting, you just click on the middle button, the red one. The camera, if you want to enable to put on your camera, you just uh, click on this. If you want to turn off the camera, you click on here. And then to turn on caption, caption is when somebody is talking, you should be able to see the, the wording on the screen of what the presenter is, uh, is talking. Then at the top here, you should be able to see the participants, your colleagues who have attended that meeting. Then we have what we call the chat box. This one is, the purpose of this is for you to type. If you have any queries, clarification, you should be able to type on the chat box. And then we have this one. As you are aware, once the learning starts, you'll be required to do some presentation. So you should be able to do a presentation online. So you just click on present now, and then you should be able to share your screen. So you use this one to display your presentation. Other features, when you click on the, there are some three dots which are there. You can be able to do this. You can be able to record the meeting. You can change the layout. You can make your screen to be full. You can turn on the caption. You can go to the settings and these other things. So I think uh, what I'll leave you with is you can go and try to create a link. You can go to the Google, your Gmail account at your own time. Link up with a friend to join a meeting using any available free online meeting tools and practice the meeting etiquettes we have just learned on this session. So Thank you very much. So we'll end that session there. Then I want to take you through another platform here. Another Google, uh, that is Google Classroom platform. So just wait a minute again. So So another platform that I want us to learn is the Google Classroom. Um, so this is for the purpose of examination and also for assignment. So as I told you earlier on, these are the key requirements for you to attend this session. You'll be requiring a working laptop. You need a reliable internet connection. The third one is a working UON student email because a link will be sent to your student email. And then the fourth one is ensure you have registered the courses on the student portal. For now, you'll be taken through how to register your courses, so you should not be worried. You'll be taken through the process of course registration in another session, I think, in the course of this week. So for you to, this just, I think these are steps that will be taken through in the course of the week, so I don't want to emphasize much on how to create your student. I think we have already done this, how to create your student email through the portal. You just go to the SMIS portal, go to my profile, 
and then create your own email. These are for the students who have not created their student email. So I think we had already gone through this process, so let me not emphasize more. So Google Classroom. So Google Classroom, for you to join the Google Classroom, you must have a student email. Another thing that you need to note is you need to sign out all accounts. The reason for this is because when you join Google Classroom with your personal email, when you sign in with more than one account, it tends to pick your your it tends to pick your personal email. So you need to sign out all accounts and then you join with your student email. We have two methods of joining the classroom. I'll be showing you shortly. And then I'll be able to show you how to open the examination and also to answer questions. So as I told you earlier on, university email is uh, hosted at the Gmail platform. So as you can see, just go to the Gmail platform and then you type your university email in full. For example, this one is missino at students.unbi.se.ke. Then you just click next, which is down here. Then it will prompt you to enter the password. Then click next to load the inbox. For those of you who will have enabled the two-factor authentication, it will prompt you to, to, to log in. Then it is highly recommended that you enroll for the two-factor authentication, or you can do it later. It's not a must. So this is what we call two-factor authentication. When you enter to your university email, it will ask you to enter the two-factor authentication. So the purpose of this is for security purposes and also for password recovery. In case you forget your password and you have enabled the two-factor authentication, then you should be able to recover to reset your password yourself. So we can go to next. So you will be required to enter the time. So once you enable the two-factor authentication, once you log into your email, maybe you log in in a different place, you will be required to enter that uh, verification code to make sure that you are the person that you have signed to that email. So I talked of signing out of all account. When you click on the abbreviation on your email, as you can see on my screen, where it is written letter M, when you click on it, if you have logged in with more than one email account, you are supposed to click sign out of all accounts and then you log in with the university email alone. So this is very important when you are when you will be logging into the Google Classroom. But when you are using your other platform, it is not very much important. So once you log into the classroom, you can go to your inbox. There are two methods that you can join the classroom. You'll be sent a class invitation. For example, the one here you will be sent an invitation like mock examination MA. Then you just click join via your inbox that is method one so from method one from your email you look for the invitation email and the subject should be class invitation if it is an exam if it is just an assignment or it's just a takeaway just click on it click on join inside the email and it will automatically open the class the class dashboard so what you need to notice if you get an error that an error message class not found so you need to sign out your email and then sign in again. You will receive an invite, a new invitation to join for every examination or for every assignment. So you should, you should, this one you should note it very well that for every invitation you will be receiving a link for it. So different invitation for different units of exams. So class invitation are sent to student emails only. So don't expect to receive the class invitation through your personal email. So you must create your university email. So method two, you can join using login to your student email. Just go to the nine dots, click on it, and then scroll down to the should be the last item down, and then click on classroom. This open a list of classes, so you should be able to know which class that you are being invited, and then you just click join. So as you can see on my bottom right, there is this recap sociology. So that will be how the screen will appear. So you just click join, and you should be able to join a class. So this is just an example of a class dashboard. Just click, uh, 
So it will have a stream. These are the menus that you'll be able to see on the stream, the classwork and the people. So on the stream, this is to collaborate with the fellow student. You can post some discussion topics and be able to discuss with the student. Classwork. So this menu here, classwork, this is the main menu now whereby you'll be able to access the class, uh, the class documents or the, or the examination documents. The people, this one you'll be able to see, to view your teachers, and you should be able also to view your classmates in that class. And then the first one here will be the name of the class. Most probably it will be the name of the unit that you are taking. If it is introduction to HIV AIDS, you should be able to see it right up there. So to access your examination materials, you need to click on the classwork menu, this one here. Click on the classwork menu and then click on uh, exam or assignment name. So you should be able to see the name of the exam. And then you scroll down, you just click on view assignment and this opens the examination page now. So if, they, if, if no examination have been posted by the lecturer, nothing will appear on that classwork page. You need to note that. So this is the classwork page. Always you should be able to see your examination paper or whatever the lecturer has posted, you should be able to see it right down here. And uh, on the right side of my page where it is written your work, that is item number five. If you can be able to see, this one will always be your answer booklet whereby you will be answering the questions which have been posted. So on my left, if you, are, if you can be able to see number four, will always be the question paper. And then on the right, where is written number five, is the answer booklet. So what you are required to do, I'll be showing you shortly, you'll be required to open the question paper. When you click on the question paper, it will open on a new tab. And also when you click, because you will need to do this simultaneously, you need to navigate back to the classwork page and then you click the question uh, question paper. And then now you do the, you attend the questions. Let me show you on the next slide. So how to open the examination, you click on the question paper. This will open on a new tab on your browser. Then you need to navigate back to the classwork page. You click on the answer booklet again, and this will open on a new tab. You need to note that the answer booklet appears with your name, and you will be required to navigate between the three main open tabs. So I think this one is very familiar with you guys because with this technology, you can be able to access more than five tabs in your browser. You can go to your Gmail, you can go to read a newspaper, you can go to Facebook, all those platforms. So you should be able to, man to navigate through the three, the three tabs, that is classwork page, question paper, and the answer booklet. So you need how to write the answers, navigate to the question paper. So what you need to do, you copy the questions you want to answer and use the shortcut keys, control plus C, then you need to navigate now to the answer booklet. You paste the questions there using control V. So you need to note that you'll be using the shortcut keys to, to copy and paste your questions and answers. Now the fifth item you need to do is to type answers on, uh, on for the questions that you are, you are answering. And now you will repeat this step for all the questions that will be required. Maybe you are you are given six questions, but you need to answer only three questions. Then, uh, so you need to answer. So once you finish, there's another thing that you need to know how to insert maybe a new page on your on your answer booklet. Just on the menus, the Google Docs, the Google this uh, Google platform works on what you call Google Docs. Google Docs is similar to Microsoft Word. So if you have used Microsoft Word to type a letter, to type an application letter, it is the same. So you just go to insert page numbers. No, you go to insert menu. Under breaks, select page break. This will enable you to insert a new page on every question that you be, will be answering. So how to submit your work? Once you finish typing your questions, you need to turn in. Turn in is another word for submit. So you can see on my image below here, you click on the turn in button, just on the right side below your work, and then a pop-up window will appear asking you to confirm 
if you want to submit. So you just click turn in and then your work will be submitted now for marking. The status will change to unsubmit. That means once you submit your work, the status that will appear on the page will be unsubmit. So from there now you can close all the tab and exit the classroom. So I think that's all for that. So my second last one now, I want to share another platform. The next platform is the Microsoft Teams. That is the platform that we are currently using. So this one is very short. Yeah, there we go. So Microsoft Teams, let me open it. So as I told you earlier on, the requirements for all these online platforms are the same. So for Microsoft Teams, if I'm a presenter, I'll be required to have an account. But for you students, the same way you have joined this meeting, you don't need an account. And then you need to download a Teams application. You need to have a laptop or a desktop with a working camera. And then this is very important, an invitation link. As I told you earlier on, all the invitation links will be sent through your email. So you need to know that. So for attendees like you now, you'll be sent an invitation link, as I told you earlier on. This is very simple, by the way. You just, uh, we send you an invitation link. You click on the link. So in your email, invite, click on the link. And I think that is what you have actually done. So the system will ask you, it will open on a new tab, and then it will ask you to either you get the Teams application or you launch it. So if you don't have the Teams application, you, you will be forced to download one and then install. Once you install, the system will launch automatically. So this is the screen that will appear on the Microsoft Teams. So once you log in, just select join now and that is all. So the Teams Live will allow you only to have the question answer session where you can ask questions and uh, and just your work there is to listen what is being presented by the by the presenter. So these are the few controls for the MS Team control. This is very important because once maybe you are now in your classes, there will be what we call MS Teams meetings. This one will enable you to even share your presentation. You should be able to mute your mic. You should be able to share your content. That is what we call sharing of presentation. You should be able to go to the chat box. And then you should be able to see participants. This one will be applicable now once you break into small units. If it is School of Economics, you can be able to use the Microsoft Teams meeting. And also we have the question answer session where you can post questions. This is applicable to the live meetings. And then at the end of it, there is the leave. This one is for you to leave the meeting. These are things you can be able to see on your end. And then that is all about Teams. So let me take you now to the last, last, um, to the last presentation that is on Zoom. I believe most of you have already used Zoom. Uh, if you have not, okay, this is my Zoom. So, Zoom meeting. Uh, for Zoom meeting, you can actually sign up or create an account. Or sometimes you don't have even to create an account with a Zoom meeting. It is very simple. You just download the app on your computer or on your laptop, even on your phone. The Android application already has a Zoom app. So what do you need to get started? So you'll receive an email containing the link to join the meeting. I think I need to emphasize this because as I told you earlier on, you'll be required to have a university email for, for you to be able to receive the invitation link for the different platform. The reason we are training you on this platform, you don't know which your faculty or your department will decide to use depending on the numbers. Some will decide to use the Google Meet, some will decide to use the Zoom, some will decide to use the MS Teams, the one that will fit depending on the numbers. 
I'll be sharing you the last. Uh, we have only six minutes, so I'll be able to show you what you need for you to join those meetings. So you will need an internet connected. I think this page, I don't need to, it is the same for all, of, for all the meetings. You will need a link, you need a headphone or headset. If it is on the phone and you are unable to receive an audio via, via your computer, you can actually use your phone if you feel like you cannot, your computer, you can only see the image, but you cannot see the audio. You cannot hear the audio and the webcam. So as the, assessing Zoom as an attendee, you will be required, you will be directed to the Zoom website. From here, you will need to click open URL for the Zoom launcher. So after clicking this, a pop-up box will open asking you to complete the registration process. I think this was a challenge for some of you when you are doing the vice chancellor's address. Once you click on the link to join the Zoom, it will ask you to, to do some registration, where it will ask you to put your name and the email address. So that is what we call the, you need to complete the registration. So please enter the details in the box and ensure you use your, for this case now, for classes that will be using the the, the Zoom, you need to use, use your registration number and full name so that the meeting host can identify who has joined the meeting. So this is very important because some of you who are joining with some funny names, so you need to join with your registration number and full names for ease of identification. So you are invited to the meeting and you already have a Zoom account, you just sign in to the, to, into the Zoom to join the meeting. If the meeting space indicates that the meeting has ended or has not started, verify the meeting time. The meeting may be scheduled for a different time zone. If you are asked to sign in to your existing Zoom account and you have forgotten your password, just select forgot password link and follow the instruction. If the meeting window isn't loading, close your browser and try to join the meeting again. So be sure to accept or approve and uh, a lot requiring you to approve the installation of the Zoom. So these are the controls. So if you not most of the controls for Zoom, for Google Meet and Microsoft Teams, they are very much the same. You, for the good thing with the Zoom, you can actually, the same thing also with Google Meet, you can invite somebody once, once the session is going on. You can be able to see the participants, you can be able to chat, and also the meeting is recorded. All this platform enables the host to record the meeting. So I will not be emphasizing any more on this uh, control uh, panel of the of the Zoom because they are similar for Microsoft Teams, for Google Meet and the MS Teams. So thank you very much. I think I cannot emphasize any more, but to just let you know that for all these platforms, make, make sure your university email is working and also Ensure you have a laptop or you have a phone which is working for the meetings. But for the exam, you'll be required to have a lap a working laptop. Otherwise, thank you very much for listening to me and I wish you all the best in the University of Nairobi. Thank you. So our session has just ended, so we can actually end there.